about urban climate trees and insect diversity. And we will speak uh, with Brenda Swinkels of uh, Van den Berg Nurseries. And Brenda, we met earlier, uh, I think two years ago in a conference on nature inclusivity in uh, Breda, I think. And that was an event where we thought we might be with 30 people, then it turned out 70, then it turned out 120, and we had to reschedule a different large hall, And which reminds me that we are still with 160 people joining us here today. So Brenda, I'm so curious what has happened since these two years. I remember flying trees, flying gardeners. We are very curious to hear more about the most recent findings from Vandenberg. So please take it away and share your screen and you knowledge okay. with us. Thank you very much for this nice introduction. I will uh, tell you the latest stories about the, let's see if this works okay, yeah. I will give you an update on how the situation has gone uh, since then, because now we are uh, so far that the first vertical building is planted in the city of Eindhoven. And I will tell you uh, how our part was, what, what our part was in that whole uh, organization and uh, how it all uh, was planted and what had what will happen now in the future and how the maintenance will be uh, of course uh, wait a minute yeah it all started in milan uh, as referred to by my by matthias in the beginning the bosco verticale was planted in 2014 and that really changed a lot um, people started thinking differently about uh, greening the urban areas and of course everybody was thinking how they could implement it in their own country um, and of course in Holland things uh, people did the same thing uh, and we contributed with a uh, planting of the, the, the Trudeau Tower in Eindhoven so let's start at the beginning. We went to Italy and we uh, visited the Bosco Verticale three times to see how everything was done and how it was made. We learned a lot. Uh, this photo I've taken myself, uh, taken about, I think it was two and a half or three years ago already. So that's how long this whole organization uh, took to, to, to make these buildings in Holland. As you can see uh, in the screen, all the information about the Bosco Verticale, 780 trees are planted on this building and over 5,000 shrubs, which is a, is a lot. And the most interesting thing is that the, 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 the temperature of the facade is, uh, is, is, has decreased a lot. So they don't need to use as much air conditioners uh, as they used to. So the, the good things really come out of this to have a better urban space and a livable city. Uh, but now we talk about uh, the technical aspects. Trees were planted in airport systems, and I will get back to you on that later. But the most important thing is how does a tree do it with the wind high up uh, in a, on, a, on an apartment building? So we used Anchorage. Uh, this is a photo, of course, of the Bosco Verticale. Uh, Anchorage is used inside the tree planter. So a strap was made in a cross over the root ball. But for extra protection, we used, uh, there is a, a, a metal strap used that was put in the balcony above to prevent the canopy from breaking. So when it would break, the, the metal strap would keep the canopy from falling down of the building. It was an extra protection together with the, with the anchorage system in the tree planter. Here you can see the metal strap attached to the, uh, to the tree. Um, and what is also very interesting here in this picture uh, on the, is, is the, the specimens that are used. In Italy, you, you can see a totally different species than we are, that are used in Holland. On the right photo, you can see Crocus ilex. Uh, of course, that's not very winter, uh, winter hardy. So this is not used in our climate. On the left photo, you can see use of a malus, it's a crab apple. Um, and what is interesting to see is that uh, all these crab apples are taken out by the flying gardeners because they won't let they they're not allowed to fall on in on the on the pavements uh, down below because it's too dangerous. So you can imagine the maintenance ha that has to be done uh, to get a, a, a tidy building um, to have everything. Uh, protected and that nobody gets injured or you don't have a very 
um, how do you say that? Uh, dirty, dirty floors. What, what I thought was very interesting was the difference between the south and north facade. Uh, the left photo, of course, is the, is the north facade, and you can see uh, very transparent planting. So the, the trees grow very slow, shrubs grow very slow. Um, and Bueri says this is the most interesting uh, facade because of, of the, the, the slow growing. It's, it's much easier to maintain. We need less pruning and it gives a better look. On the opposite side, of course, the, the south, uh, a lot of volume, uh, a lot of maintenance is needed. They have to do a lot of cutting, a lot of pruning to keep the plants uh, within the tree planters and not, and not, not uh, to prevent the branches from breaking out. So a lot of extra help is needed to uh, get a good a look and a safe south facade. So it's very interesting to see the big differences what and what sun does in such a project. Now it's time to go to the Trudeau Vertical Forest in Eindhoven. It was, uh, the building has been has started two years ago and this, this spring the trees have gone up the building. It started all in December, just before Christmas, the first trees were planted and last April, the last trees got up uh, the building. They started at the low point and from low they went up with the, the, the big crane that was standing there, uh, yeah, building of course the whole apartment building. 125 trees have been planted over there uh, and Bueri has uh, done uh, advising and Inbo has done uh, the designing as well. This is also, this building is on Stripe S, as the story was mentioned before. Um, it's a very interested area of the city of Eindhoven, Old Philips complex that is now opened up for, for people to live in, and which is a very creative area. And this building really is uh, an extra value for this whole neighborhood. And what's very special that it is for social housing. So people uh, that are, that are uh, living here, they don't have to pay that much. And that's a big difference if we compare it to uh, the, the Milan, the Bosco Verticale, because these are those apartments, they cost yeah, millions and millions of euros and people can live here for about six to 700 euros per month rental price. So that's yeah, way different. Um, that's the, so the social housing is very, very important and um, yeah, special to the Trudeau Tower. If we look at the species, the tree species, the, there was a big group or big group, three companies uh, talked together about what trees should, should grow here. Uh, and also the planting specialist from Boeri was, uh, uh, gave her advice, Laura Gatti. And we, we, yeah, we chose, for instance, Cornus Moss, uh, two different types of Amelanchier, Parochia persica, multistems, uh, Acer campester and Acer campester redshine. Uh, Prunicea doensis, Sorbus dodong. So all these species that have extra value in, in spring when, when the flowers are, are there, but also that have a really nice autumn color. So it's very nice and attractive all year long. The evergreens are there in the winter, but they are, the evergreens are only in the, in, the, in the shrubs, but the trees are all, uh, yeah, uh, they, they really show the, they are herbaceous, they, they give, the spring colors and the autumn colors. The trees were all prepared in AirPods to have a very good uh, root ball. Uh, I will explain about it later. Here you can see the multi-stem parochias. They have been planted here. They have been put on AirPod two years ago to get this perfect root ball and to, uh, to, have, a, to have no uh, outfall when they were planted. And here you can see a batch of uh, Pyrus uh, salicifolia pendula. They are they are gray. They have gray leaves, and they make you think a little bit about the olive trees in Italy. So that's probably why Bureri really wanted this this species. Well, together with other companies, we were able to make a mock-up. Just we so we we got two uh, tree planters with the exact same uh, measurements as the balconies of the Trudeau Tower. And we tested different uh, substrates. We tested sensors for watering. 
We tested the irrigation system and tested the mulch layer above. So we did all this testing and it was very helpful. We had a, a year and a half to do all this testing and also to put the sensors, to check the sensors, when was the, when the, to test when the substrate was too wet, when it was too dry, and to test what substrate we could use best for this situation. And yeah, it was so helpful that um, we really decided amongst all companies what to choose. So um, because of the results, it was quite easy to choose the right substrate. And we chose the substrate what let the which which was very um, uh, which had a lot of oxygen in it and water could could go through it quite easily uh, because then we could adjust it very easily. The other substrate that we tested had a lot of organic material in it, but it stayed too wet. It was wet all the time. It was wet for a long time. It could stay wet for several weeks, so it did not dry that easily. So we did not choose that substrate, but we chose the one that we could adjust quite easily because once the trees are planted, you can never do that again. So it uh, had to be right the first time. So that's why we chose this one. I already told you before about the AirPod system. Uh, um, well, this Linda, is what- so, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we, we are still good in time, but could you come to a conclusion maybe that we yes. stick to the schedule? Thank you very much. So this is the airport system. Trees were uh, planted in this uh, in this airport system and uh, to get a very good root. Um, and that was really the key thing for the trees to grow in such urban space on this height, um, that we need to make sure that the roots were right because the real quality of a tree is in the ground where you don't see it. So um, the airport system is, is, is um, let me, let me, oh Jesus, <laughs> it's difficult to explain now. I will go to the photos after it's been planted because I think that's more interesting, but I can share information later what the airport system is like because it's quite difficult to explain it in words. I got to show it to you. Here you can see the Buiri is testing uh, and inspecting all the plants, but here you can see the planting of the Trudeau Tower. Uh, so you can see it's really urban, urban area, urban space, and with this balance beam, the trees were planted in the planters. The substrate has been uh, uh, blown on the, on the planters. Um, so the planting, uh, the planting scheme was made by Laura Gatti. So it was a big puzzle and everything came together. So the planting went quite well because of this balance beam. Here you can see Trudeau of the Trudeau of um, Dupre, the, the tree planter who's doing it. And of course you can see the limited space in the tree planters. So Pruning the trees is, a, is, a, is key in this whole, uh, whole story. Um, we have these flying gardeners that go down in the, in the Bosco Verticale, but in this social housing project in Eindhoven, the maintenance will go uh, from the inside so because of price. It's too expensive to go from the outside, so they, made a, they will make a schedule that uh, three or four times a year, a gardener can come through the apartment and do the maintenance of the planters, just because of price. Once a year, a flying gardener will go down with ropes to prune the rest of the trees to, to do the real pruning. But normal, um, the normal maintenance will be done from the inside. Uh, this switch was made only recently because of budget. And, that, and unfortunately, that is, that is what it is. That's something we need to deal with. Um, here you can see some photos of the view you have. It's right in the middle of Eindhoven. Uh, and you have yeah, an instant forest right on your balcony uh, with the selection of, of tenants. Um, they, they ask people who have a, a green heart, you know, who really want to live there to have a community that is, uh, that can uh, take care of, of the balconies. Because in Holland, they say they don't, they like trees, but they don't want it in front of their window because of the light that doesn't come in anymore. Uh, so people were selected that they do not think this way and they think otherwise. So um, um, that in the future, in future time, uh, this will still be a very nice green, iconic building in Stripe S. Here, the last image. And hopefully in five years time, just still everything is green because now we are only 
uh, have uh, we only have a few months now uh, experience of watering and everything else. So now it's 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 very important to monitor it in the future, and hopefully we can uh, have this green mill building uh, for for I don't know 25 years. So uh, we are very anxious to to uh, we'll follow it um, step by step, um, and we are very confident it will continue to be a beautiful iconic tower in the city of Eindhoven. Thank you. Sorry for my English. It was not that not that great. Thank you very much, Brenda. <laughs> no, perfect, oh. perfect. Thank you very much. Could you I unshare your screen, Dutch. please? And uh, oh, then sorry. we uh, do some uh, little questions left. Thank you very much. And there is a couple of questions in the chat. Irene, Uli, do you want to put some of them forward to Brenda? Yeah, I guess uh, one question uh, or several questions could be um, summarized by um, if it's better to have um, shrubs or herbs um, for the for it's easier in maintenance and maybe the same effective. And what do you do if trees are getting too big? I mean, the roots, not the tree itself. You mentioned it, it will be cut, but um, yeah. This... Yeah, because because you will cut the trees from above. You the 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 growth of the roots will also be very limited. They don't have to grow that much because you. You keep them in balance as well. If you prune the canopy, then uh, the roots don't have to grow that much uh, to, to give nutrition to the canopy, to the leaves. So it will all be balanced, uh, but you will have a kind of bonsai, uh, bonsai trees. That's what you will have. Uh, the nutrition will go with, uh, it's an organic liquid nutrition that will go with the watering system. So we will give them nutrition uh, so they will get their food. So they, the roots don't have to grow that much. And I think so another was question, other question? Yeah, was, was question? Sorry. Was about the irrigation. Um, how much water does it need and which uh, water source do you um, use? Yeah, the water, water source that is used is from the top. So water is collected from the rooftop of uh, the Trudeau Tower. And what falls down uh, is been put in a big tank under the ground. And that is used for uh, the watering but that is not enough because the roof is not big enough to um, give every tree the, the right amount of water especially in in april and may when uh, the spring is there there's more water needed so then we then tap water is used unfortunately and maybe i can conclude with the last question thanks irene and uli for uh, reading those from the chat um brenda um we know from uh, the Bosco Verticale that a lot of studies are done about increasing biodiversity, especially yeah. also insects and biodiversity on the building itself. Do you know anything or, or what is your expectation, if you can say so already now, about the hopefully positive impact to biodiversity on the larger area around the tower or is it limited to the building itself? No, it's not limited to the building itself. Uh, and on Stripe, a lot of roof gardens are there. And one uh, that is just across the Bosco Vertical, there's Anton and Gerard, two buildings with a roof, roof terrace that was designed by Bureau Lubbers in Den Bosch. And one roof was rewarded with, uh, or rewarded, there were test, tests done. And that was the rooftop with the highest rate of biodiversity on it. So it, that's opposite to the Bosco Verticale. So there's a lot of biodiversity on Stripe as we speak. So, but this will just uh, add extra biodiversity because of the, yeah, the, the varieties, the, the, the Acer, of course, it um, has a lot of insects on it. So it will only increase. Yeah. And sometimes we maybe underestimate the, the stepping stones uh, uh, insects and other animals or seeds can take. Thank you very much again, Brenda, for the update. and. In a way, you invited yourself back uh, for over five years to check yeah. how the Trudeau Tower will look so like. So much then. to tell, yeah. And ten minutes is very short. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that, and we'll uh, we'll we'll be in touch. I would say.